If there is one thing that scientists agree on, it is that planet Earth has an expiration date. Astronomers, biologists, physicists, geologists, nuclear scientists, agronomists, among others, have projected the possibilities of events that could definitively end life on Earth. And some examples of these possible events are the threats of nuclear war, the collision of a giant asteroid with Earth, plagues, diseases and famine, water scarcity, climate change, among others. And all of this is very likely to happen, after all, nations like Iran, China, North Korea and Russia have announced several times that they possess chemical weapons to be used at any moment. And in the year 2016, the former President of the United States, Barack Obama, announced that the next goal of the American space program would be a manned mission to Mars. The prediction was that this would be possible by 2030, but unprecedented partnerships with private companies, such as Elon Musk's SpaceX, have allowed plans to be accelerated more and more, and it is possible that the mission may happen sooner than expected. Unlike the space race that supposedly took humans to the moon, the journey to Mars is not aimed at reinforcing the importance of a government or a specific country. The United States and Russia, once enemies competing against each other, joined forces in September 2017 to build a space station in lunar orbit, an important step in the plan to send manned missions to Mars. The investment made by governments and companies involved in this project, in terms of time, work and money, is immense. And all this effort certainly would not be done out of mere curiosity. So the question that remains is, why spend hundreds of billions of dollars on an almost impossible mission that will send people to another planet with no expectations of return? The reason that will never be clarified anywhere is only one. The only guarantee of the survival of the human species is to abandon planet Earth and find another place to live. According to Barack Obama, the missions to Mars will teach us how humans can live away from Earth. But think about this. Wouldn't it be better to invest all this money in improving life here on Earth? The answer is no. If scientists conclude that at any moment our planet may cease to exist or become uninhabitable. Elon Musk, one of the most involved in the Mars Journey Project, has stated that colonizing the Red Planet is essential to preserve the human race and ensure the continuity of civilization. He clearly stated, it is important to have a self-sustaining base on Mars because this planet is sufficiently far from Earth and the survival is more guaranteed than on a lunar base. If there is a third world war, we want to ensure that there are enough seeds of human civilization somewhere. And in his final statement about the possibility of life extinction on Earth, before his death in 2018, scientist Stephen Hawking said that Earth is only a few centuries away from becoming a giant ball of fire due to the increase in population and energy demand. But governments and scientists today are aware that many other factors have combined to make the expiration date of this world much shorter than previously thought. So, whether it is due to human interference through wars, climate change, or asteroid collisions, it is very clear to everyone that the future of Earth is to go up in flames, and those who do not want to disappear in the flames are willing to pay the necessary price to get rid of it. All these scientific projections confirm what the Bible has been saying for thousands of years. This world will end in fire. The Lord Jesus Christ himself affirmed this when speaking about the end times. Let's see what he said. I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. The Apostle Peter, through the revelation of the Holy Spirit, spoke about this event. Look at what is written in 2 Peter, chapter 3. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, where righteousness dwells. The government's and scientists' thinking is not wrong. What they don't know, however, is that not only the earth is threatened, but the entire universe. The heavens will also be destroyed, meaning stars, satellites, and other planets all have their days numbered. 
Yes, my brothers and sisters, the earth will end in fire, and human beings need to find another place to live. But that place is not Mars. It is a new heaven and a new earth that the Lord Jesus has prepared for us. It is in these places that Jesus will take those who believed in his name and lived their lives in obedience to his words. The Lord gave the following vision to the Apostle John. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And unlike what many think, you don't need to be part of any space project to be saved from the end of the world as we know it today. You also don't need to be friends with any billionaire who wants to take people to space. What you must do is surrender your life to Jesus Christ and become his intimate friend, because it's not money or rockets that will save your soul when the end comes, but rather the blood of the Lamb that was shed on the cross 2,000 years ago. See what the Bible says. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Hallelujah, I will explain to you exactly what all of this means. First of all, God loves you, and he has a wonderful plan for your life. In the Bible, there are many passages that talk about how much God loves us. The greatest example of this was when he sent his son Jesus into the world to die for our sins. But even today, the Lord takes care of you, and what he desires the most is to have an intimate relationship with you. Amen. Second, we are all sinners and separated from God. It is very common for people to believe that there are various paths to reach God. There are many religions in the world, and in each of them, there are good and honest people. So it may seem strange to know that they will not be accepted in heaven, even though they do so many good things. But the truth is that we are all sinners, and just one sin is enough to separate us from God because he is holy. See what the Bible says. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. And as you can imagine, this is a big problem since we cannot stop committing sins. At some point, we end up lying, coveting something that is not ours, using the Lord's name in vain. And in this way, we will never be able to earn God's favor on our own. But when all seemed lost, the next truth solves our problem. Jesus Christ is God's only provision for sin. We will never be good enough, so brothers and sisters, we need a Redeemer, someone who can pay for our sins. So, out of his great love for us, God gave Jesus to be the sacrifice for our sins. He endured the punishment we deserved. See what the Bible says. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The death of Jesus paid the debt for all our past sins and even for those we will commit in the future. On the third day, God raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand to be our mediator. The fourth truth you need to know is that Jesus Christ is the only way to God. I know it may seem simple, but many people still believe that there are other paths that lead to God or other ways to attain salvation. This misconception has kept people away from the truth of the gospel. Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one can come to the Father except through him. Therefore, it is necessary to understand that being a good person, believing in God, and doing our best to serve Him is not enough to be saved. It is necessary to accept the Son of God, Jesus, 
as the only way and means of salvation for humanity. See what is written. The Father loves the Son and has placed everything in His hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. And the fifth truth is that you need to receive Jesus as your one and only Lord and Savior. To dwell in heaven, you need to receive Jesus as your Savior and confess it with your mouth. See what is written in the Bible. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Amen? And now I want to pray a salvation prayer together with you. Open your heart and pray along with me, okay? God is waiting to hear these words from you. Jesus, I need you in my life. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I come before you to confess my sins and ask for your forgiveness. I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you rose from the dead, and that you are alive today. I open my heart and receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving my sins and granting me eternal life. I ask that you guide my life from now on and transform me so that I may do your will and not my own. In the name of Jesus, I pray and thank you. Amen. My brother, if you prayed sincerely, asking Jesus to come into your life, the Bible says that you have been saved not by your own efforts, but by faith through grace, which is an undeserved favor. See what the Bible says. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God not by works, so that no one can boast. When we receive Jesus Christ, we are born into the family of God through the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit, who dwells in every believer. This is called the new birth and is just the beginning of a wonderful new life that God has prepared for you. To deepen this relationship, you should now read your Bible to know Jesus better, talk to God in prayer daily, share with others about Christ, and the transformation he has made in your life. Have fellowship with other Christians in a church if possible, where Jesus is preached, and demonstrate your new life and transformation through love for others. If you like this message, share it with your friends and family. Let's spread the gospel message. May God bless you and see you in the next video.